Alright everyone, welcome to the Nine Pence channel. Today I'm doing a tutorial for you all. And uh yeah. So today I'll be showing you guys how to create your own simple visualizer like mine that I use on my music channel. So I'm not gonna be as enthusiastic on these videos because it's not gaming or anything. So I'm just gonna be straight talk, serious mood, and all that stuff. So yeah, I'm still the same person, just talking with a different tone of voice. So, uh, let's get started. Let me show you what your final final product might look like. So, click on that. So, if you want something like this, stick around. If you're looking for something different, go check out my other video that I'll be posting later uh, today or in the week. And I'll be showing you guys how to make like a better advanced visual. Like I said, it's a simple visualizer for basic beginners at making music when you just want to get started. So I'll be showing you guys how to make this with a simple website called Scratch, and uh, we can get started after that. So basically what you want to start off by doing is, um, hold up, let me clear up a little bit of my tabs because I have a lot of those, and just go here, open a new tab, and at your web address, type in scratch.mit.edu. I'll leave the link in the description. Now you get this page. Uh, you can't see all of it, but you can see part part of it. You can see the create, explore, discuss, about, help, and then uh, my account, which I'm signed into Nine Music. So let's go over here, create our. Uh, this was the song I just released uh, a couple hours back. Uh, here's the simple visualizer that I just showed you, and we'll just hit new project. So you're going to want to create an, a new account. If you're new to this, but if you're not, just sign in, and I'll be showing you guys how to make a simple visualizer without going through Java and stuff. Of course, I make my advanced visualizers through Adobe After Effects, as well as Java and other coding languages. But this is a language that's very easy for all kids to understand. So I'll just title. I'm just going to title it How To. You can title it anything you want. Um, but yeah. So basically, uh, over here we got the toolbar. This is uh you you can there's a library they have and you can you know upload sprites to create your own games. There's a lot of things you can do with this software. Uh, if you check out my first channel that I ever created, it's got a whole tutorial series on this, and then you can buy the advanced course for only five bucks. So uh, check it out if you're interested. But uh, yeah, so I'll actually be starting a new series on that uh, coming forward on how to create your own simple games but uh, first I have to finish my learning procedure of all the languages uh, and you know I have a lot of work at school as a kid as well so let's just get started into building the visualizer what you want to do is hit this paint new sprite button and go to the ellipse tool click on that and make yourself a small decently sized circle once you have that just exit and just go move it to the best center you can. You can also set it to go to zero, zero. Uh, so you'll have to know coordinate plane to do this. Uh, if, you, if you're like in map, just make sure you know that. Except zero, zero didn't work too well. So try and center it in the middle of the screen as best as you can uh, if zero, zero does not work for you. So once you think you've got it uh, centered, uh, this is your center point. Now, uh, you can title it Center Point if you don't like it being titled Sprite 1. It'll uh, automatically set all your sprites to Sprite 1, Sprite 2, and so on. So we're going to title this Center Point. And this will be very important to the success of our visualizer. So basically, what you, you want to do is when flag click, all you're going to do is uh, forever. So again, this is very easy to understand. It's like Ruby. It's English. It's pure English. So when green flag clicked, which is this, forever. So forever do something. So that'll be wait point one seconds, um, and then you're gonna create a duplicate of yourself. That's what clone means if you don't know that yet. So create a clone of yourself, and it's gonna do that forever. And then you want to grab this block. That says when I start as a clone, and once you do that, say go to motion, bring up the glide block. 
Now you want to go to operators and hit pick random. Now on the coordinate plane, this is the x coordinate vary from negative 240 all the way to positive 240. For the y, it's 180 to negative 180. So right now we fill, put that in the x and we put that in the y. So we're going to say for the x, negative 240 to 240. I'm using a new computer, by the way, because uh, I don't know. I want to test it out. And then we have negative 180 to 180. And now I would say make this 1.5. And that's all you're going to want to do. That's it. So once you click flag, it should do a motion like this. But then you realize it doesn't go away. And you're like, oh, wait, what do I do? So what you want to do is go to looks and hit hide. So they go somewhere and then they hide. And then you'll never see them again. And this center point always creates those clones so it never runs out. And it's gliding to a random position. So now that you don't want to see this ugly center point anymore, you just want to see these moving out of your main thing. So you can choose any image you want. I would say your logo, so say Trap Nation was your logo, uh, you just get Trap Nation here, uh, and then I'm just going to find, not videos, images, try and find myself a logo like this. This I think seems pretty cool. I'm going to drag it to my desktop, or if you're on Windows, uh, right click and save image as. Go back here, hit upload, sprite from file. Hit that, find which uh, image that is, uh, mine's avatars, and then we'll pull up. And then what you want to do is shrink it with the shrink tool up here that you can't see. So basically there's a toolbar up above this how-to. There's like file, edit, tips, and uh, about. And then there's a toolbar, which is stamp, uh, cut, uh, grow shrink and block help. So hit the shrink one and just click on this and shrink it to a decent size. I think that's good enough. Then put it over the center point. Now once you hit flag, it should do that pretty nicely and things will work pretty well. So now that you don't want like a white background, all you have to do is simply go to your stage, which is your back background, um, you're simply going to hit this button, which picks up a color. You're going to click, uh, sadly you can't click on the outside, which kind of sucks, but we're going to grab ourselves a dark purplish color and fill that in. Now, you realize that doesn't look good? That's fine. You can do that. You can choose any color you want. In this case, I don't want, uh, anything like that. I'm going to try and find myself, um, a good, uh, Trap Nation background picture uh, like this. I think this one looks pretty good. I drag it to my desktop or again Windows save image as. Go back to your scratch project. Hit the import button on your desktop or on your backdrop page and then find your image. Which, oh, not wrong one. Sorry. Uh, I'm going to get rid of that. And then it's this one and it'll pop up, uh, readjust the size as you want. Uh, I'm just going to move it down here, uh, fill it with that color, and we're good. And let's see how it works. And you're done.